As 2016 draws to a close, I have some really exciting news to share with you. As you might remember from my last video, part of Mars One has recently listed as a publicly traded company on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Well today, I'm pleased to say that Mars One has closed a 6 million euro investment deal with the Hong Kong based firm World Stock and Bond Trade Limited. The funds from this deal will be transferred over a six month period starting in January. This means that Mars One has now finally secured the financial backing to move ahead with the next phase of its operations. This deal has really been a long time coming. And what I find particularly remarkable about it is that after all the years of meandering back and forth with private financial deals, it only took 10 days after Mars One officially became a publicly traded company to cement this arrangement. So this now means that the astronaut selection process will indeed proceed as planned in 2017. The designs for round three and four have already been formulated. And now Mars One will go ahead and determine the locations and the dates for these rounds, along with hiring a specialist team for the selection and training of the participating crews. Now, as candidates, we will be given at least a six month notice period before round three takes place, once locations and dates are actually confirmed. So expect to see a lot of activity in the second half of 2017. And in addition to this, I'm pleased to officially confirm that Mars One plans to reopen their astronaut selection process next year for the first time since 2013. I'll of course keep you all up to date right here once more information on this is available. Now, I know there's been times this past year when it seemed like progress has been going awfully slow. And of course, things have taken much longer than initially envisioned on the financial front. But now the acceleration can finally begin. In fact, just since my last update video, there have been six new press releases out from Mars One, with one of the most major being the public release of the Paragon Surface Exploration Suit study. This is the second part of the conceptual design study that Mars One contracted Paragon to work on in 2013, with the other part being the Environmental Control and Life Support System study that was released last year. The full 40-page report is now available in the publication section of Mars One's website, and I'll also link to it down below. For those of you interested in the top-level summary of the technical specifications of the Mars surface suits, I worked with two other Mars One candidates, Oscar Matthews and Josh Richards, to put together a two-page abstract that summarises succinctly all of this information. I'll also link to that down below for you. But since I can't really do it full justice, I mean, it's a long report after all, I do also intend in the new year to put together a detailed summary video where I will explain how the suits actually work and all the key challenges moving ahead with their design. You can also expect to see next year a wide variety of additional conceptual design studies just like this one being commissioned in order to further refine and flesh out the mission architecture. When you consider actually that Mars One's net expenditure over the past five years has been around 1 million euros, the 6 million due to be spent over the next 18 months or so will represent a 20 fold increase in the cash flow dedicated to making this mission a reality. So in short, this financial deal is a big win and I'm pleased to see that things are really moving now. But of course, 6 million euros is far from sufficient to cover even the cost of the first demonstration mission. And though this amount fully covers the immediate operations that Mars One has planned, in order to raise the hundreds of millions, roughly 400 million for the first demonstration mission, required to actually send a payload to Mars, it's clear that the innate value of the company will have to rise. In fact, it's interesting to note actually that if you examine the 6 million euro deal, it will actually value the stock price of Mars One at 0.18 euros per share. 
If you compare that share price to a company like Tesla Motors, which currently trades at over $200 per share, you can see that the share price of Mars One would actually only need to be one-tenth of that of Tesla in order for a stock sale similar to the one to actually fully cover the costs of building, launching, and operating the first demonstration mission. So whilst it looks like Mars One now has a solid path forward on the financial front, it's clear that you, you can't just raise the share price of a company by a factor of a hundred or a thousand overnight. And it's for this reason, in consultation with their investing partners, that Mars One has made the call to push back their mission timeline. In short, the demonstration lander has been moved back by two years, from 2020 to 2022, and rather than launching alongside the demonstration lander, the first communication satellite will instead get its own dedicated launch slot in 2024, with the first rover mission pushed back to the following launch window. This means that, in effect, each mission following the rover mission is being pushed back by two launch windows in order to spread the mission costs over a feasible financial time frame. And since each launch window occurs 26 months apart, the net effect of all of this is that the first crewed mission is now not scheduled to launch until 2031, five years later than the previous timeline. Now, of course, I'm sure many of you will be disappointed to hear this. I know that myself and many of the other candidates were. But it's really important to emphasize here that this adjustment to the timeline was made specifically to bring it in line with Mars One's new financial strategy. And this financial strategy is working and has already yielded its first demonstrable success. And hey, Mars One aren't the only ones to suffer from delays. Just take for instance that just recently it was announced in the case of both SpaceX and Boeing that they have both experienced delays due to a myriad of technical problems on getting their commercial crew programs online. So both of their schedules have actually slipped to 2018 now. And who knows what might happen to NASA's direction under their new leadership, although that's an entirely different story. I mean, just even in science, it's common for optimistic schedules to slip. I've actually got a paper that I was hoping to submit about two weeks ago that probably will still take a few more days or so before I can finally push it out. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, if it's a choice between rushing to meet an unrealistic deadline and making sure that something is done the right way, then it seems to me at least very clear which strategy will pay the most dividends in the long term. So before I sign off, I'd really like to know what your personal space highlight of 2016 was. I can of course think of a few myself, such as the Red Dragon announcement and the SpaceX drone ship landing, but please drop your thoughts down below to get a bit of a discussion going. And what about 2017? What are you really looking forward to seeing? Speaking of which, I'm really looking forward to seeing this paper finally finished. So I should probably get back to that now. So until next time, I hope you all have a wonderful new year. Thanks for watching. If you're new to this channel, I produce monthly updates examining our progress towards establishing the first human settlement on Mars, along with exploratory videos on planetary science and human spaceflight. This month's feature video is footage from the SpaceX Control Center showing Elon Musk's reaction to the first Falcon 9 landing one year ago. I have plenty of great content planned for 2017, including on my own exoplanet research, so be sure to subscribe, comment, and send in any questions you have down below.